In this video, I'd like to walk through one of the challenges that we have when editing an infrared photo in Lightroom and how we can solve that challenge. It has to do with the, the, this red cast that we start off with when we look at a photo. This, this infrared photo was shot with a 590 nanometer filter and I want to turn it into a false color image with a, a blue sky and some colorful foliage, but this red cast is making it challenging. So the first thing that I would normally do is grab my color picker for the white balance and maybe grab some of the sky and try to improve the white balance uh, based on this raw photo. And and I, I you can see I've made some improvement. I've got some uh, nicer colors separation from the sky and the foliage. A lot of that red cast is gone. But the challenge is that when I look at the temperature slider here, it's, it's bottomed out, uh, it, which doesn't give me a lot of flexibility. Um, I can go back up, but that just takes me into the reds. But I want to go farther to the left, and I can't do that. So the way that, I, that it, the way that I can overcome that is by using a new uh, color profile. So the color profile in this shot is the default for Lightroom, which is the Adobe color profile, but that's not going to work. So what we need to do is create our own, and we can do that with the Adobe DNG profile editor. So let's walk through the process to create that so we can make better infrared images. So the first thing we need is we need a DNG file. This file is a RAF, which is a raw Fujifilm file. Uh, but in order to actually use the DNG profile editor, I'm going to need a DNG file. So I can, there's a couple of ways that I can do that. From the library module, I can import, um, and when I'm importing an image for the first time, I can select copy as DNG. This will convert your raw images to uh, the DNG format uh, right on import. But if you, if you haven't done that and you already have your image in, you can also go to li the library menu and select convert to DNG. So I'll do that. I'll just accept the defaults. And now Lightroom will convert this photo from an RAF to a DNG, and you can see that it's done so. All right, so now that I have uh, this file in place, now I can uh, work with the DNG uh, profile editor. So first thing we need to do is to get that. So if you do a search for the Adobe DNG profile editor, you will come across this link uh, at Adobe. And if I click that link and scroll down the page, down under the resources section, I can see the DNG profile editor. And what you'll need to do is download your copy for the Mac or Windows. And then get that uh, running and then open that up and this is what it looks like so uh, just a open space until we open up a DNG file and then some controls on the right so let's open up our DNG file there it is and this will just take a second so one thing I'll tell you while this is loading is that you only really need to do this once um, for your photos uh, one profile will service all of the infrared photos that are shot with that same camera. Um, so it's, it's really kind of a one-time step. There's a number of controls that we have in here that we can use to improve our photos. Uh, to, to, to create this profile, we could, we could uh, adjust the tone curve. We can go into color matrices. And this is where we want to make an adjustment. So what I want to do is... Uh, what you're seeing right here is take the white balance calibration. Typically when you open this up, it'll be set to zero. Um, and the first thing that you want to do is take the temperature setting down to negative 100. And really that's it. That's the main thing that you want to do here in the DNG profile editor. I'll go into options and I will put in the name of this profile. So in this case, I'm a uh, Fujifilm X-T20 infrared you can name it whatever you like and then when i'm ready uh, to save this i can go to file export and there's a um, a specific location that we need to put this in i've created a shortcut to the path and what i'll do is i'll put a link down in the video description for the path you need to use for both windows and mac you can see that I've got a number of other profiles I've created here with some various settings. So I've got one that's at a 
ne the negative 100 temperature that I just showed you. And I've done a couple variations at uh, different temperatures. Also created a, a black and white version where I just took the uh, saturation of each color down and then a slightly desaturated version. So while you only need one uh, color profile, you could create a handful of them if you want some flexibility. So go ahead and save your color profile to this location. And now if I head back over to Lightroom, now in Lightroom, I can go to the develop module and under the profile, I can select the profile browser to the right. By default, you're going to see the Adobe, uh, Adobe raw profiles, but I'm going to go down to this profiles section down here and expand that up. And here you'll see all of those various profiles that I created with the Adobe DNG profile editor. Uh, so this is, um, kind of my standard, and then here's my negative 50, negative 75, negative 100, black and white, and then a desaturated. Now these all look, they, the color balance is all over the place, and that's okay, that's normal. So, but I'll just, I'll select this, uh, my, my, the most commonly used profile that I have here for my uh, raw files, and I'll close this. And now, uh, when I go to select a white balance, and if I would do the same kind of white balance on the cloud, um, now you'll notice that the temperature slider is a little bit more centered. And the benefit here is that now I can move this around a little bit more. So for example, if I go to the right, I can really get a lot more pop in these colors and separation. So this is the kind of flexibility that you want when you're creating your false color infrared images. You want to be able to slide these around and have some control. So let's say I decide that I really like the setting here. I could play around with the tint as well. Get that where, where I like it to be. And then what I'm going to do next is to be, take this photo into Lightroom to be able to now do the channel swap. So now that I've got these, uh, the, the white balance where I like it, I can click here, edit in Photoshop. Now this file will load up in Photoshop. The only change I've made up to this point is just tweaking, selecting that profile and tweaking my white balance. And now if I swap the, the, the channels, now I get this sort of standard infrared look that, uh, that I'm looking for. If you look at the channel mixer uh, adjustment layer that I've done, it sets the red output channel to 100 and it sets the blue output channel to 100 in the red area. And that's really it. Um, so now, now that I've, I've made this change, I can save this file. I can, I have a choice. I can, I can do more editing here in Lightroom, but if I just prefer to, uh, in Photoshop, but if I prefer to work in Lightroom, then I can just head back over to Lightroom. And now here it is. Now this um, image is available to me um, in Lightroom and I can go through and start making changes. I could, uh, you know, add a tone curve, create some punch here, um, adjust my contrast, add a little clarity, etc. All the sort of standard stuff you do um, in Lightroom, and you have all that flexibility now. So here is where we started um, with our, uh, um, let's see, uh, our DNG file. So here's the here's the DNG we uh, with our original profile. Um, we had this very, you know, harsh red color by switching over to a custom profile that we've built. We get these nice, uh, clean colors for a false color rendition, and then we can channel swap in Photoshop. And now we get the look we're looking for the blue skies, the colorful foliage. Um, and this is a great starting point for, uh, making our edits or tweaking the colors a bit to, to do whatever we like. So there we go. That's the process for creating a DNG color profile, which you can use in Lightroom or in Adobe Camera Raw to make it easier to uh, get the white balance that you'd like in your infrared photos. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.